Hey everybody, it's Janice Martell from the McIntyre Powder Project. I have spent more time than I care to admit to during the Christmas break uh, composing this open letter to the WSAB, um, basically because I started getting phone calls on Christmas Eve from um, uh, minor, minors who had uh, filed claims through OCAO to the WSAB for um, occupational diseases. Um, and they were getting phone calls from the WSAB asking them if they wanted to proceed with the claim or have their information sent back to them. And I am struggling to understand how that is not a form of claim suppression, given that those workers all signed directions of authorization forms, specifically saying uh, that they were consenting to giving that information through OCAO to the WSAB uh, for purposes of filing claims with the WSAB, claims registration and adjudication for the following health conditions. Um, that wording was given to us and the suggestion to do the direction of authorization forms was given to us by the uh, Vice President uh, of uh, Complex Claims at WSAB, so I don't understand why these workers are getting calls. And it just uh, made me decide that it was time for me to write an open letter to the WSAB. So here goes. This is an open letter to the Ontario Workplace Safety and Insurance Board, the WSIB, still commonly known as Workers' Comp. Before I address you directly, I will outline some of the background and systemic issues which this letter is intended to address. First, I am writing this letter in my capacity as the founder of the McIntyre Powder Project and as a child of one of the miners who was subjected to forced aluminum dust inhalation by his employer with the knowledge and support, both tacit and practical, of the Ontario and federal governments under the McIntyre Powder Aluminum Prophylaxis Program. I am also writing this letter as an active, in the trenches ally of the workers, widows, and families of the occupational disease clusters found among other workplaces, including, but by no means limited to, General Electric Peterborough, Kitchener Rubber Workers, Ventra Plastics Peterborough, Victims of Chemical Valley Sarnia, and numerous undiscovered clusters yet to come, particularly from industry and the building and construction trades. Those workers, those widows, those families are struggling with the same injustice, fighting the same unyielding, ill-equipped and poorly designed system that it would seem more often than not fails to provide them with a fair, robust, timely review of their occupational disease claims and frequently denies them compensation for a host of health issues tied to a larger host of workplace exposures to a cesspool of carcinogens, toxins, dusts, vapors, gases, chemicals, fumes, and various unknowns. We are engaged in the same fight and we will work as allied forces to effect sweeping changes in the system of compensation that is failing workers, widows, and families. The system that is failing responsible, safe employers. The system that is failing municipalities and taxpayers by shifting the burden of occupational diseases from irresponsible employers to crippled systems of healthcare, social assistance, and disability. In order to change the WSIB system, we need to change our priorities. Workers exchange their labors for wages and benefits. Workers do not exchange their health for employment. It is a fundamental human right to be safe at work. And this includes the right to be protected from toxic exposures. We can have a thriving economy that also ensures that our workers are safe. Money spent on adequate ventilation and dust control in mining, for example, reduces lung disease rates and thereby reduces the overall cost to healthcare, disability, employment insurance, and social assistance systems. But in Ontario, the silica exposure standard is four times higher than the international standard. And in Ontario, compliance with the exposure limit standards is tied to the economic feasibility on the part of the employer to meet the standard. On July 11, 2017, I attended a lung cancer and prevention and mining conference in Sudbury and listened as a mining industry spokesperson matter-of-factly stated that it would cost his mine eight times the amount they spend on ventilation in order to provide the ventilation needed to reduce exposure risk to recommended levels and that the mine simply would not or could not spend the money. Yet in the same mining community, a state-of-the-art ventilation system was installed at considerable cost at Creighton Mine 
in order to reduce radon exposure for researchers and research experimentation purposes at the Sudbury Neutrino Observ Observatory, Snow Lab. What that speaks to is the value that we, we as a society place on the lives of those researchers and the importance of their scientific work over the lives of the miners and the importance of their mining work. And right there is where we have it wrong. Stop for one minute, 60 seconds of your life, and look around you. Take away everything in your surroundings that comes from mining. Every nail in your home, your office supplies, the vehicles you travel in, your hockey skates, surgical instruments, medical equipment, research tools, electronics. Most of us would be homeless. Kiss your cell phones goodbye. Society as we know it would grind to a halt. The labor of miners makes our way of life possible. The labor of building tradespeople and factory workers makes our way of life possible. And those workers experience significantly elevated levels of acute and chronic toxic exposures during their working career. Combined and cumulative workplace exposures that significantly contribute to loss of health and loss of life among these workers. And when those workers turn to you, the Ontario WSAB, for help, they face a bureaucratic system that is not designed to serve them well. A system that is not functioning to serve them well. A system that is not functioning to serve and support your own staff sufficiently enough to enable them to serve those workers well. Your system needs to change and I intend to see that change through. So now I speak to you directly. I have no love loss for the Ontario WSIB and I don't imagine that I'm on your Christmas card list either. But it does not matter what I think of you and it does not matter what you think of me. What matters is these workers, what matters is their families. Those workers need help and their families need help. I am in a position to help them because I put myself there. I choose to fight for them. You are in a position to help them because you are legislated to do so. And I and all of the other occupational disease cluster advocates and allies will hold you to your duties under that legislation. And where you fail to fulfill your legislative duties, we will expose your failures. And where the legislation fails our workers, we will challenge the legislation over and over and over again until it is changed. You have a legislative duty to monitor the scientific evidence for occupational diseases under section 161 subsection 3 of the Workplace Safety, Safety and Insurance Act. That duty was handed over to you in 1997 after the independent Occupational Disease Standards Panel was abolished by the Mike Harris government. In 1996, under decision number 249-96, Ontario's Workplace Safety and Insurance, Insurance Appeals Tribunal, known then as WCAT, overturned your denial of an electrical worker's entitlement to benefits for a neurological condition related to occupational aluminum exposure. In 1997, in direct response to the tribunal's decision, because a worker won entitlement for his claim, you, the WSIB, then known as the Workers' Compensation Board, developed your negative entitlement policy on occupational aluminum exposure and neurological disorders. And because of that policy, for 20 years, no other worker could win entitlement for a claim for neurological conditions caused by occupational aluminum exposure, including my dad, Jim Hobbs, who struggled and died with Parkinson's. When I learned in 2011 that my dad had to inhale finely ground aluminum dust known as McIntyre powder in 1978 and 1979 when he worked at Rio L. Gomes Quirk II Mine in Elliott Lake, I became my dad's worker representative on a WSIB claim for Parkinson's. We mailed in the claim on September 26, 2011, and I followed up on October 31, 2011 when we hadn't heard anything from WSIB. So on that date, a claims adjudicator was assigned. 10 days later, the assigned claims adjudicator commented to me, quote, Parkinson's disease is generally not looked at because it is rarely work related, end quote. The following month, prior 
to the WSIB's medical consultant's review. That same WSIB claims adjudicator stated to me, quote, Parkinson's disease is not related to his work history, end quote. When I pressed her to explain on what basis she could possibly come to that conclusion, when the medical consultant had not even reviewed my dad's case, the claims adjudicator stated, quote, based on there is no scientific link between this type of employment and this type of disease, end quote. She further stated that, quote, underground minors are not associated with Parkinson's disease, end quote, and that she was just giving me a quote unquote heads up. My dad's claim for Parkinson's related to his mining employment and, ex and my McIntyre powder exposure was denied. It was only after we objected to that initial WSIB decision that dad was granted the benefit of a WSIB occupational hygiene review of his work history and exposures. And then his claim was denied again. Dementia, Alzheimer's disease and conditions under neurologic, with neurologic effects are not occupational diseases or injuries by accident under the Workplace Safety and Insurance Act when they are alleged to result from occupational aluminum exposure. The available medical and scientific evidence does not establish causal associations between occupational aluminum exposure and dementia, Alzheimer's disease, or conditions with neurologic effects. That is the WSIB negative entitlement policy that was established in 1997. That is the reason that dad's WSIB claims adjudicator made the statements that she made about no scientific evidence linking Parkinson's and mining. And that WSIB policy making and claims adjudication process in conjunction with the WSIB's legislative powers, particularly their duty to monitor scientific evidence of occupational diseases, is the heart of what must change in order to achieve fairness, balance, and justice for workers afflicted by occupational diseases and their families. Here are just a few of the important discoveries about these issues from documents I obtained from the WSAB under my Freedom of Information request. Number one, in 2016, in response to a CBC journalist's question, have you ever compensated a minor related to aluminum dust? The WSAB acknowledged that, quote, based on the WSAB's operational policy, occupational, aluminum, exposure, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and other neurological effects, Operation Policy Manual Document 16-01-10. No claims have been allowed for exposure to aluminum dust, end quote. So because of that negative entitlement policy on aluminum and neurological disorders, no claims for McIntyre powder exposure were allowed between 1997 and 2016. Number two, despite that fact, the WSIB revealed in a 2016 draft house note for the fall sitting of the Ontario legislature, le the legislature that, quote, the WSAB has not conducted a formal review of the scientific evidence to assess a causal association between occupational aluminum exposure and neurological conditions since 1997, end quote. So you, the Ontario WSAB, develop a policy that automatically shuts down any chance of a McIntyre powder exposed mine worker succeeding in a, WSI, in a WSIB claim for neurological conditions. And for 19 years, you do nothing, nothing, to formally review the scientific evidence upon which that policy is purportedly based. Despite the fact that you have a legislative duty to review that evidence, despite the gravity of the barrier that your policy posed for those workers, for their survivors, and you did nothing. Any worker in any workplace who failed to perform a critical aspect of their job for 19 years would be fired. And so would their leadership that allowed that to happen. Whether you failed to recognize the importance of your legislative duty to monitor the scientific evidence of occupational diseases, or you simply chose to disregard that duty, or both, you have forfeited your right to be the entity charged with that duty. That duty must be removed from the Ontario WSIB and returned to an independent occupational disease standards panel whose recommendations are made binding on the WSIB for purposes of occupational disease 
claims adjudication. Point three, despite the fact that the WSAB did not actually conduct a formal review of the scientific evidence on aluminum and neurological disorders, the WSIB indicated in media release, releases that they did. In January 2016, when the Fifth Estate requested an interview with the WSIB on the McIntyre powder issue, WSIB declined the interview and instead prepared a statement among their senior staff for media release. That statement included the following, quote, the WSAB monitors scientific developments regarding the relationships between workplace exposures and the development of occupational diseases. Regarding the McIntyre powder project, the scientific evidence continues to be inadequate for a link between occupational aluminum exposure and the development of Parkinson's disease, end quote. When one of the WSAB staffers questions, quote, do we really have someone monitoring relationships between exposure to aluminum and these diseases, end quote. The response he receives from senior management is this, quote, the legislation requires us to monitor and our scientists do that. We don't always update the policies, but we do provide the updated science to the OD, occupational disease, area in other forms, adjudicative support documents. Also, the original suggested wording is previously approved wording and our standard response to any similar inquiries, end quote. So you just keep telling us that you're doing your job, but you're not actually doing your job. Furthermore, the Assistant Director of Operational Policy confirmed in the same email series that, quote, OD, occupational disease, policies have, haven't been touched in years other than the firefighter presumption, end quote. So for years, decades in some cases, you just continue to make decisions on workers' compensation claims using policies that you failed to review or update based on the latest scientific evidence, despite the fact that you have had the exclusive legislative duty to monitor that evidence since 1987. Point four, and this is critical, in an email in early 2016, as a result of the Fifth Estate's The Miner's Daughter episode, senior WSIB personnel drafted an internal briefing note titled Media Coverage on the McIntyre Powder Program and Development of Neurological Conditions. In the email attached to the briefing note, the WSIB Assistant Director of Operational Policy discussed the need to add in information about the history of the negative entitlement policy on neurological disorders and occupational aluminum exposure. Here's what she said. Quote, anything we can add re-policy history would be good. Irene says it was in response to a Wissiat decision. I assume it was more trending in decisions, so we wanted a policy to bind them. End quote. That statement is extremely revealing, and it provides crucial evidence that the Ontario WSIB uses its operational policy-making powers to bind the hands of the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeals Tribunal. The tribunal is the only avenue of appeal available to workers to have their denied compensation claims reviewed. But the powers of the tribunal are limited by the policy-making of the WSIB under Section 126 of the Workplace Safety and Insurance Act, which states, quote, if there is an applicable board policy with respect to the subject matter of an appeal, the appeals tribunal shall apply it when making its decision, end quote. So if the WSIB makes a decision on a workers' compensation claim in accordance with its own operational policies that the WSIB itself writes, that decision cannot be overturned by the tribunal. Their hands are tied. The Ontario WSAB is writing operational policies that have the effect of law. Quote, I assume it was more trending in decisions, so we wanted a policy to bind them. End quote. What that statement reveals is evidence that when the WSIB sees a trend in tribunal decisions that they don't like, the WSIB develops policies to shut the tribunal down to bind their hands. 
to functionally limit the adjudicative powers of the only avenue of appeal for workers or their survivors. And in the case of the McIntyre powder miners, the WSAB didn't wait for a trend in decisions. They shut down the tribunal after the first decision that granted entitlement to a worker for a neurocognitive disorder related to occupational aluminum exposure. That is not a fair system. That is not a just system. And that is why I fight. During the course of my McIntyre Powder Project work, I have spoken critically of the WSIB and until such time that there are meaningful, substantial, substantive changes in the workers' compensation system in Ontario, I will continue to speak critically of the WSIB because for all of the reasons given and more, I assess it to be an oppressive, unbalanced system. When I speak critically of the WSAB, I am speaking broadly of the system and the legislation that governs it. My criticisms are in reference to the organizational culture, the bu bureaucracy, the behemoth that is WSIB. I am not referencing the individual workers and particularly not the frontline workers who are themselves caught in a chaotic system restricted by outdated, inflexible, narrowly focused occupational disease policies that do not reflect evolving evidence of occupational links to disease and that do not encourage or allow for a broader focus on combined and cumulative exposures when weighing the evidence. I know that you have staff at all levels of your organization who are hardworking and who try their best to do, to do a good job and affect positive change. But your organi organizational culture and structure combined with your legislative powers results in an unbalanced system for workers and their families. And that is particularly true for workers with occupational disease claims whose symptoms of occupational illness may not appear for years or even decades after exposure. These are complicated cases and they deserve a comprehensive systemic response that in turn requires comprehensive systemic reform. Because if we are not looking at these workers as a whole, if we are not documenting what they are exposed to and what health issues they have, then we will never find the next benzene. We will never find the next asbestos. And we will be dooming the next generation of workers to the same fate. We need to make these reforms. And until we do, I am asking you, each and every worker, manager, and board member of the Ontario WSIB to begin to affect that change within your organization, to think critically, to question rigid adherence to your occupational disease policies, to ask when the last time the policy was updated, on what evidence was it based, and what evidence exists now, to provide the robust reviews that are required to fully and fairly consider each worker's unique circumstances in evaluating occupational disease claims, to consider the totality of exposures, the interaction of exposures, the combined and cumulative effects of exposures on the health and life of the workers who turn to you for help. Do that and you will earn the respect of the workers and the families that you serve. If you had done that for my dad's claim, we wouldn't be here. Respectfully, Janice Martel.